Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to this video series on Windows Server 2012. <clears throat> virtual Disk Service. Virtual Disk Service VDS was created to ease the administrative efforts involved in managing all of the various types of storage devices. Many storage hardware providers used their own applications for the installation and management, and this made administry all of these various devices very cumbersome. VDS is a set of application programming interfaces, APIs that provides a centralized interface for managing all of the various storage devices. The native VD S API enables the management of disks and volumes at an OS level and hardware vendor supplied APIs manage the storage devices at a RAID level. These are known as software and hardware providers. A software provider is host-based and it interacts with plug and play manager because each disk is discovered and operates on volumes, disks and disk partitions. BDS includes two software providers, basic and dynamic. The basic software provider manages basic disks with no fault tolerance, whereas the dynamic software providers manage dynamic disks with fault management. A hardware provider translates the VDS APIs into instructions specific to the storage hardware. This is how storage management applications are able to communicate with the storage hardware to create LUNS or fiber channel HPAs to view the WWN. The following are Windows Server 2012 R2 storage management applications that use VDS. The disk management snap in is an application that allows you to configure and manage the disk drives on the host computer. You have already seen this application in use when you initialized disks and created volume sets. Disk part is a command line utility that configures and manages disks, volumes, and partitions on the host computer. It can also be used to script many of the storage management commands. This part is a robust tool that you should study on your own because it is beyond the scope of this book. Figure 11, sorry, figure 1a shows the various commands and their function in the disk part utility. Disk RAID is also a scriptable command line utility that configures and manages hardware RAID storage systems. However, at least one VDS hardware provider must be installed for disk RAID um, to be function, Bo sorry, booting from a VHD. Um, once you have installed each operating system, you can choose the operating system that you will boot to during the boot process. You will use a boot selection screen that asks you to choose which operating system you want to boot. The boot configuration data BCD store contains boot information parameters that were previously found in boot.ini in older versions of Windows. To edit the boot options in the BCD store, use the BCD edit utility, which can be launched only from a command prompt. To open a command prompt window, do the following. Launch Windows System32 CMD.exe. Open the run command by pressing the Windows key plus the OR key and then entering CMD3. Type cmd.exe in the search programs and files box and press enter. Summary. In this chapter, you studied the latest advantages of using Windows Server 2012 or 2. You also learned about the different roles and features you can install on a Windows Server 2012 or 2 machine. You also explored how to migrate those roles and features from a Windows Server 2008, 2008 or two and Windows Server 2012 machine to a Windows Server 2012 or two machine. I discussed the different upgrade paths that are available and which upgrades are best for your current 
um, network setup. We learned that another important issue to decide when installing Windows Server 2012 or 2 is whether to use Server Core or the GUI installation. You learned how to install Windows Server 2012 or 2 data center with GUI and you installed the Windows Server 2012 or 2 Server Core. Remembering Server Core is a slimmed down version of Windows Server with no GUI desktop available. It's a safer alternative to a normal Windows install. As discussed, a nice advantage of Windows Server 2012 or 2 is that you can change from Server Core to the GUI version and back again. I discussed a feature called Features On Demand. This feature allows you to remove roles and features from the operating system and remove the associated files completely from the hard drive, thus saving disk space. You examined the various aspects of Windows Server 2012 or 2 storage services, as well as the various types of storage technologies and native Windows Server 2012 or 2 storage management tools. I started this chapter by discussing initializing disks and choosing a partition type MBR or GPT. I then discussed the type of disk configurations, dynamic and basic, that are supported in Windows Server 2012 or 2. You will learn that various properties are associated with each type of configuration. Then I discussed the different types of RAID and the properties of each. The next section explored storage technologies, namely iSCSI, Fiber Channel and NAS. I primarily focused on iSCSI because of the native support in Windows Server 2012 or 2. You learned how to configure an iSCSI initiator and connection to an iSCSI target. After that, you looked at its ISNS server and how to configure it. The chapter concluded by looking at Storage Manager for SANs and Storage Explorer, which are built-in management tools in Windows Server 2012 or 2 for storage devices and firewall settings. So I'm going to leave it here today for uh, this video. If you like listing, please consider like sharing and subscribing. Thank you.